Our simulation shows that global food prices are going up by an average of 3.7%. And about half of this increase is due to higher transport costs. Hello, this is the Weekly Tradecast, a podcast brought to you by UNCTAD, the UN's trade and development body. I'm Sarah Toms. We're exploring how major events are shaping trade and development and how that affects billions of people around the world. This week, we're looking at maritime trade. More than 80% of goods move by sea, but the pandemic has put severe strains on global supply chains as rising demand collides with shutdowns at factories and ports. Space on ships is tight and prices have soared. Sending a container from China to the US West Coast is now 12 times more expensive than it was two years ago. With the war in Ukraine, prices of almost everything are rising, adding to the production costs for manufacturers and ultimately what people end up paying in the shops. Joining me now is Jan Hoffman, head of UNCTAD's trade logistics branch. Jan is an economist who spent many years working for a shipping company in Germany, so he has hands-on experience of sailing the seas. Thanks for joining me, Jan. So first off, of course, we can't ignore COVID. You know, it's been two years that we've been suffering the impact from that. How would you say it's it's shaped the supply chain crisis and what other factors were at play? Right, good good question. So we saw with COVID that on the one hand, we had more demand. Uh, everybody was ordering more things on e-commerce rather than spending on services. On the other hand, uh, the supply, the efficiency of ports and the whole intermodal system slowed down. Our ANCTA data shows that ships spend about 20% more time in port than, than pre-COVID. Uh, so this mismatch then led to these very high prices, which, which we'll come back to. On a, on a positive note, to overcome these challenges, a lot of our member countries have invested additional resources, technical assistance in digitalization, in making the ports work more smoothly, with a lot of solutions where we also work on, from UNCTAD, we work on customs automation, we work on single windows, we work on smart ports, port management, e-documents, e-signatures, and all these things may be a positive, long-lasting impact of this pandemic. That's a good point, actually, because um, I lived in Singapore for several years. Of course, Singapore has a very digitalized port. Um, and if you can compare that to somewhere like the US, of course, um, is very heavily unionized and is far more about people. Uh, well, you mentioned Singapore, you mentioned US ports. In fact, there have been recent assessments by UNCTAD, by the World Bank, that do put the United States ports actually at the very low end of some rankings of port performance, <laughs> while Singapore and, and other ports also in the Middle East are more at the top of the ranking. And if this pandemic has showed anything, it is the importance of maritime, of maritime logistics, of seaports. And I would only hope that, um, yeah, that those who are less advanced will learn from those who are more advanced. But is this also the new reality for companies and consumers now, that the costs mm -hmm. are going to stay once they're there? For the maritime logistics, for the container shipping, actually the... Other challenges these days are additional lockdowns in China, additional strikes and thre threats of strikes in in Republic of Korea, in Germany, and in the United States again. So all of this puts additional strains on the supply chain, and it it just reminds the the shippers you have to be resilient, you have to diversify. We must ensure competition choices. And then the the whole issue of better planning and integration of supply chains depend more and more on data and digitalization. On many things we, we can't do, we cannot forecast a new pandemic or a new war, but to be better prepared and have all the digital tools in place and to have different sources of supply ready is the one thing we can prepare for. 
there are also additional costs associated with the decarbonization. So investors, ship owners, ship operators, ports need to get ready for shipping that is decarbonizing, that is the whole energy transition. Now, um, there is a global food crisis at the moment, and um, we've been hearing in the news about how so much grain is stuck in Ukraine. How bad can this get? Our simulation shows that global food prices are going up by an average of 3.7%. And about half of this increase is due to higher transport costs. So, yes, we have less grain available, so the commodity price goes up. In addition, the alternatives, if you are Egypt and before you have imported from Ukraine, now you have to import from the United States or from Brazil, you have to go over longer distance. This increases costs. And linked to the previous point about the, the shipping cycle and available ships, we don't have enough ships. So if the same existing fleet has to go over longer distance, ton miles go up, and freight rates go up even more. We have highlighted this food crisis, the, the impact on poverty, on hunger. It is really bad. And unfortunately, the transport costs and transport capacity are a very important part of the problem and the solution. Thank you to Jan Hoffman from UNCTAD for being this week's guest. Tune in to the weekly Tradecast next week and every week for more insights on the most pressing issues around the world of trade and development. There's even more on our website, unctad.org. I'm Sarah Toms in Geneva. Goodbye for now.